Ooh. It says we're live. Hello. <laughs> Erica made the oh no face. <laughs> so, uh, Don, you are having weather today? We are. Um, usually when they tell us we're going to get a lot of snow, um, it usually goes somewhere else and we get, you know, like maybe an inch. But they said it was going to start snowing around noon and it literally it's coming down really heavily. So I have to go get the kids early from school. My husband's on his way home. Wow. Nice. There may be, um, because we could get 8 to 12 inches of snow. So, wow. Um, which is awesome because we could see grass this morning. So my kids are in major winter revolt, and this will make them very happy, actually. Yay. So that's nice. I want to tell you guys we may also have another little visitor. That's why I keep looking down, actually, because we have a dog from the Humane Society right now that we're trying out with our other dog. Um, and she, I think I have her settled, but she thinks she's a lap dog. So she may, <laughs> she may pop up. How big is she? She, <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. She is um, a 50-pound bulldog. So, yeah, you'll know, you'll know if she's here. <laughs> Um, Cause she thinks she's uh, an yeah, English right bulldog here. or American yep. pit bull terrier or no, what? No, she's an English bulldog. We um we've for 20 years we've had English bulldogs and um usually in pairs and one of our pairs we put down at the beginning of the month. So we had a very lonely boy and we've been looking for um we've been looking for a friend for him and we know we don't have really have time for a puppy right now. <laughs> And it's winter in Minnesota, and it's not a great time to be house training a puppy. Um, so we have a relationship with the person who runs the uh, English Bulldog Rescue locally, and uh, she found out that Dolly was at the Humane Society, and it just worked out. And we we brought her home. She needs a lot of medical care, so we're seeing, we're trying to figure out what we can do to get her that right now. That's right. what we're trying to figure out. Good for you. No. That's, oh, we have a question. Just No, I just want to let you know we have one person um, from South Carolina on with us. Wow. Uh, A.T. Blanton. Oh, I, I forgot to ask you if it was okay, but you're in the chat room, so anybody in the chat room knows <laughs> it's you. So it's A.T. <laughs> yep. That's Ann Two-Step. She's, uh, she's commented on the show several times. So hi, Ann. It's nice to have you here. And now, oh wow, I can actually see we have a, a little list that says how many people are here. That's so cool. So I took your advice, Don, last week. And yeah. I went and I found the pattern you were talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And I've got horrible screen burn. We've got a bright day today, which is not what we've had lately. And so I started using the yarn that I showed you last week. Mm -hmm. And I have started crocheting. Nice. Yes. I. What do you use for markers when you do crochet? Do you ever use a marker? Um, the clippy ones are the. I never do, <laughs> but the clippy ones are the ones you would use. Yeah, so because good. otherwise it gets stuck in there and you can't move it. Thought. And you'd yeah. have to cut them out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that wouldn't be very good. No. No, but I was really happy, and the the yarn. Um, this is the yarn from Japan. It's really nice to work with. Oh, good. You'll like it. And when you, after you block it, it'll just all open up and look just lovely. The pictures online, I'm going to have to put a link in the show notes to that um, to that pattern because the pictures are gorgeous. And yeah. The, there's my, oh, the light. What if I do this? There. Yeah, you can see. It's all pretty. Nice. So, uh... Our friend says that, uh, I'm assuming this is she, um, made some clippy uh, stitch markers. I guess she said she makes stitch markers. She makes and the stitch ones she made stuff. are the clippy ones that uh, you, you could use for either knitting or uh, um, crochet. And she says your yarn is pretty. It is pretty. Thank you. That's from Yokohama Mama. She brought it from Japan. Ah, just cool. And this came from uh, Renee, who is um, Revenant oh. on Ravelry. This is my this was my Christmas present. So it's it is Gosh. gorgeous, and it's I think it's a I think it was a merino silk blend. Let's see if I can get schmancy. It is schmancy. It's all, and it's nice because it's garter, so I can wear it 
<laughs> the way that I would wear it, which is, oh my God, I've got to run out of the house and throw it around my shoulders. Nice. Is that another Martina Baim? We were talking about Martina think, Baim last week. Is that a Martina Baim? I think it might be. I'd have to go and compare it to the pictures in the the Ravelry. In the Ravelry. But I think it I think it might be because it's that same kind of short road yeah. prettiness. Well, I'll tell you in a sec. Oh. Yeah. It might be is it Magrathea, maybe? Um, is it part of the yeah. hitch part of the hitchhiker series? It maybe. Might be. I don't know. I'll have to ask her. Well, if I could type, I would tell you. <laughs> Very I funny. Think it's hard. Maybe she said on here. Nope. I know she told me though. I'll find it. I'll find out. You will. The show notes. So I have things to show you. I actually thought about it this week. So Yay. after we talked last time, I actually cast something on. This is as far as I got <laughs> this week. Now I don't feel bad. <laughs> it's a it's a um, swatch I'm doing in hat form for a sweater in the round. Oh. <laughs> um, and it is the yarn. I have no idea how this. Oh, it's working pretty well, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty. So it is Briar Rose Fibers Charity. Um, and it is for a, Chris is hosting a knit along for a charity donation sweater pad, sweater vest oh. pattern called Mr. G's Memory Vest. And the, uh, I can't remember, it's all or part of the, no, you make a donation to, I think it's the Alzheimer's Foundation, and then you get the pattern, you you know, email the designer and say, I made a donation, and she sends you the pattern. Um, so, anyway, I can actually cast something on. That's really pretty. Which I love that. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't happen. That's a good thing, because I have more. <laughs> we need the to have time. Thing. I love this. The other thing I did this week um, was rip back. Did I tell you last week that I had a sweater I knit for myself and it like was too short and the body didn't fit how I wanted it to? No. No. Well, I did last winter, and I knew I just needed it to be longer because I wasn't wearing it. And I love the top. You know, I love how the yoke fits. I love how it fit to my bust, and then it just needed to be different on the bottom. So I. I sent a little snippet of my yarn to Chris at Briar Rose, and she dyed a matching hank for me. Ooh. And um, so I ripped back the body of the sweater, and now I'm re-knitting the body of the sweater from the bust down. Um, and so this is the oh, yarn. Can wow. you see? Yeah. Nice. That's beautiful. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. This is her um, wistful, and wistful is, what is this full? 50% alpaca, 30% merino, 20% silk. Ooh, there you nice. Go. I think it. Yeah, it's really lovely yarn. It's actually the yarn that Brenda used for the sweater she did in the first book. The first Farage, yeah. Yeah. For the, the Sistrata. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the yarn she did with that. And the pattern of the sweater is Ready, R E D Y. Cool. So when I get it far enough to try on, I'll try on and take a picture for you guys. Are you working with Chris um, still going to um, fiber festivals and things? Because weren't you working for Briar Rose for a little while? No, I wasn't. I've done some patterns for her, some crochet stuff for her, she's actually. Great. She is great. She's she's just, yeah, she's a wonderful person, and she's so talented as a dyer. And, yeah, I love how she runs her business, and, yeah, Chris is good people. And Erica has a question. Quickie. Yeah. Well, no, um... Comment. I gotta make it clear so you can see that's the exclamation point, not the, the question, question mark. mark. <laughs> um, no, before we get too far past it, I wanted to say that Heather, your shawl appears to be brickless by Ooh. Martina Baim. Ooh. It appears to be brickless. Cool. And it is Baim. Ha, uh, you guys are so yeah, that's Baim. <laughs> you were all psychic last week. You didn't even know. <laughs> That's so good. We just like her stuff. I do. I now I do too, because it's really good. And uh, Don, on your Twitter feed, I hadn't seen any any fabulous recipes going by this week. Have there been any? Um, yes, but I didn't take pictures of them. We made the red velvet cupcakes. <gasps> you did. Yeah. So I will. I think there's still some. 
in the house. So I'll take a picture. <laughs> I'll take a picture of them, and then maybe we should probably start a um, maybe a thread on your Ravelry group to post the recipes oh, in. Does that that's make a really sense? Good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe we'll do that. That'd be fun. So I'll try and take a picture of that and uh, get that out to you because those are really tasty. That sounds like fun. I the only thing I made that was any good was a um, chicken tortilla soup that had oh yum yeah you know there are some nights when you just think mm -hmm. leftover chicken and what yep yep I yep was with that. yeah that's an easy one yeah. yeah and that's a really good thing too mm -hmm. it is yeah another one that's easy actually we just made it um, for the kiddo's birthday who was yesterday the barefoot contessa has a recipe she calls weeknight bolognese and it's delicious mm -hmm. that sounds good Mm -hmm. That sounds nice. Is you could it put it on leftover anything. kind of stuff? It is not leftover kind of stuff, but you start with ground beef instead of all the complicated meats that have to cook for a whole day to end up with bolognese. So, but it's very, it's really tasty, and you can use it. Yeah, we put it on pasta, baked potatoes, all kinds of things. Ooh, that yeah. reminds me, we got a recipe. I'm trying to remember the name. It's a, it's a blog. It's a Texas dad who cooks, but the, the reason I found him was completely accidental. We had, um, not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, my dad gave us pressure cookers, um, gave my sister and me both matching pressure cookers, and they're not regular stovetop ones, they're electric, which oh. kind of freaked me out at first, because I have, I have an old one that's great, but this, you know, you push a button and it does whatever it does. I was looking for a recipe for walking taco meat. Now, have you guys heard of walking tacos? <laughs> yes. yes. If, your, if your kids do enough sports, you know a lot about walking tacos. <laughs> oh, my God. We hadn't come into a, into contact with these until the boys were doing something at, at the school. Yeah. And, and I thought, <laughs> Frito taco in a bag? What could go wrong? <laughs> right. So I was looking for a good recipe, and I found this one. And the dad has two different two different recipes, super crazy easy. One is for walking tacos and one is for Frito Frito pie. Mm. And oh, yeah, Frito one pie. of the two recipes spices the meat so differently. There's cinnamon in it and there's dark chocolate, you know, pressed dark chocolate cocoa powder. So it's like a mole almost. It is like a mole and it mm -hmm. is so addictive. Yum. The 15-year-old, if I make it, he'll just come in from school and say, is there any meat left? <laughs> Scoop it up. It's so good. I'll make I'll make sure I put a link to that out because it's yeah do so yeah. worth a try. Yeah, I'm looking online and I can't. T there's a million walking taco recipes. So yeah, I'll have to. I went to the, the wrong one. The iPad. No, it's I like his stuff and I like the way he talks about cooking too. He's seems like a good guy. And uh, at says the uh, Frito pie is a childhood comfort food. Oops. Sounds about right. Yep. Yep. And one of the safe ones for me. I can still do the Frito pie. Because uh, it's corn chips and not uh, flour? Yep. Yep. Can't do the saltines anymore, which is weird. Uh, you know, when you feel sick to your stomach, you... Uh, yeah. So what are your... Do you just go for rice? Yep. Rice, banana, toast. Yeah. There's some decent breads out now, so that's okay. Yeah. Are they a simple have, enough carbohydrate that they don't bug your tummy? Nice. Yeah. yeah. And rice, I mean, they're all rice flours anyway, so it's pretty mild, which is nice. Good. Which is really nice. That and ginger ale. I've oh, no, you're not uh, drinking it because of tummy issues now, are you? Yeah. I I think I, I exhausted myself. Um, I know this Imagine is shocking. That. How could that have happened? <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, and then this weekend I got slammed with a surprise deadline that was supposed to have been canceled, I thought. Um, Oops. And the stuff was due Sunday night, and I'm still working on it. When we get off this, I'm going to go back to working on it. Oh, my. Nice. Yeah. It's real interesting, though. It's on infographics, oh. which doesn't sound all that interesting when I say it out loud, but I had no, I had no awareness of what goes into making an infographic. Hmm. The, de the designers who really do these things, they spend 60 to 80% of their time 
on data. Just that makes sense. Right? Collecting Parsing the data. The data and figuring it out. And <laughs> at first I thought, why would anyone want to do curriculum on an infographic? That's a dumb. Uh. But now I'm looking at it thinking, God, this is a genius way to get kids to synthesize information and look for trends and find cause and effect relationships between weird things and and then have to explain it in a really simple way. Mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah, it seems thing. like for somebody who's more of a visual graphic learner, that would be the way to get it into your brain <clears throat> instead yeah. of just paragraphs of data. Yeah. Well, and I think there's also, there's that point of, uh, one of the designers said that when you, that, that everybody's instinct is to show everything. Like, this is all the research I did, or this is all the data I found. And when you do that, the weird errors in people's data can get hidden. And so you can, if you train yourself to always look for the, the story that the data is telling you and you focus in on that and you learn to focus your writing in on things like that your writing gets more concise your thinking gets more accurate and you get to be better at noticing like well wait a minute this poll this poll doesn't make any sense like I found one infographic that was baby boomers consider themselves dot 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 and it had percentages and it was a nicely laid out graphic but the percentages added up to 243%. <laughs> nice. And you know, it doesn't things, work. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's interesting, but it, you know, they don't say anything like, they don't say if this was one of the polls where it was pick all that apply. Right. Oh, yeah. percent would be fine. Right, right. But when you see the percentages, you think it's a percent. So right. It right. looks like they made a mistake. Yes. This crazy. is why we label our work, kids. Yes. The details matter. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Yep. That's right. So at least it's not boring. It's boring. That's right. That's okay. I have my well, crafting. I have, I have some crafty. <gasps> Yay! Some, some show and tell. Um, this, I have no idea what this yarn is, but I've. it's got, I don't know if you can see how there's, there's mesh and then it extends. Yeah. So. Does it have it, an eyelet row in there too? It has eyelets. What it is is, um, I'm probably going to write this up, but it's uh, it's like a, a Fibonacci sequence. It, the one row has one, the next row has one eyelet, the next row has two eyelets, the next has three, then five, then eight, then thirteen, then twenty-one, and. Uh, it must it it must be because uh, I watched um, what is it Da Vinci Code recently <laughs> that must have been what inspired that oh we've got Eleanor on is, uh, mm. Eleanor says yes details matter hooray <laughs> she signed on as her son it says Eddie but it's really Eleanor well that's good to know that's because her son has the YouTube account. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I was going to say, it's an awfully strange looking picture for someone named Eleanor, but that's Eddie. It must be a picture of her son. <laughs> My kids have icons now of ridiculous characters that they've drawn. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. They're being very creative, which is not a bad thing either. Well, let's see. They're yours and Andrew's. I would imagine that would make for creative kids. <laughs> They're doomed. <laughs> yeah. There's the a lot double of whammy. <clears throat> they are. We, we did actually say to, to our 15-year-old, finally, that um, the bad news is that it's going to be hard for him to find a girl to date. But... <laughs> The good news is that when he does actually find a girl, she she may very well be the right one forever because <laughs> it's going to be an interesting set of set of data that he's going to have to correlate. We've been we've been doing our our uh, history of the world through movies, so we've done Casablanca and Citizen Kane, and what did we do recently? 
Jaws. We haven't done Apocalypse Now yet. I said I vetoed that. That's one. a rough. Yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah, I think I think mm-hmm. Andrew forgets about the end when. Oh, are you coming to say hi? The end is pretty. Say hi. There pretty you oh are. my goodness! There you are. Want to say hello? Oh, puppy! There you are. Oh, oh, puppy. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she is cute, yeah. But she's kind of a heavy lap dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, 50 pounds. Actually, she's, you know what she's trying to get at? She's trying to get at the book. She loves this book. She has great taste. <laughs> oh, just, my God. Yeah, but she wants to lick it. That's so gross. <laughs> I wonder what it is about that that makes her want to... It came from Amazon. It can't smell like much, but their warehouse, right? <laughs> Maybe she just has good taste. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll That's... have to try a read. We'll have to try a read aloud with the dog. <laughs> See how it goes. That would be interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. So I can give everybody who's here gets a preemptive uh, a preemptive newsy bit, which is that the we have David Clark who is reading the Count of Monte Cristo for us. Ooh, and we have a question. I'll answer yes, um, Eleanor wants to know what the dog's name is. Uh, her name, well, the name she came from the Humane Society with is Dolly. We haven't decided if she's keeping that or not. She doesn't really respond to it, so I think we have license to change it if we want to. Cool. <laughs> yeah. How old is she? Uh, they say she's six. Wow. Yeah. So we'll see. She's a sweetie. See, if she we ever get another dog, I want to get an adult dog that's already house trained and all that, you know, a rescue that way, not a puppy. No. I, I'm not doing the puppy thing. I potty <laughs> trained two kids. I'm not house training a dog. You're done. <laughs> so done. Yep. Yes, Eleanor, it's an English bulldog. And we have AT back. Oh, good. I was wondering if her internet was going to be dicey with the, the weather. I know my friend in North Carolina is still having a hard time with tons of snow. I don't know if South Carolina is still up a creek. But so the um, the premium book that we're going to do is uh, when we're done with Miller's Tale, we're going to do Three Men in a Boat to Say Nothing of the Dog. Huh. Speaking of dogs. <laughs> and, and John was originally going to read that for us and I had a really hard time finding or well, figuring out what to do. And um, I contacted B.J. Harrison over at Classic Tales Podcast, and I hired B.J. with our Patreon money to read Fun. for us. So it's going to be, it's going to be good. I am really, really excited. Fun. That's, that is fun. And he's, oh my gosh, he's a sweet guy. Oh, and we have a comment. Oh, just A.T. says, don't worry, no snow there. Oh, good. Okay. So she's not... She's him. not drowning in snow. Excellent. Dawn is drowning in snow. It's all here. But we, yeah, we like it, though. <laughs> do, you, do you have your scringy out front for the squirrels? You know, we haven't put it up for a couple of years because the, um, the dog, the, ugh, the other dog, the dog we lost um, this last month, she went mental over the squirrels. And I was really, I was afraid that she'd go through the front screen when we had the front window open. Oh, gosh. Because, yeah, if they were bouncing out there, the one dog would just like to watch them. But she was like, it was an affront on her being if there were squirrels in the front yard. <laughs> we had more fun with that. We haven't gotten it out of the basement yet, and we I need to. But we have a big tree out back, which would be perfect. So for people who don't know what this is, Dawn has sent this to me. <laughs> It's you hang it over a tree branch or something up in the air, and you screw um, corn, dried corn that's still on the cob. You screw that into a screw, and then you hang it, and it's got a cloth-covered spring on it so that nobody can get hurt. And you hang it just enough off the ground so that when the squirrels decide they want to come eat, they jump up and grab the corn and go wangy wangy wang. So it's bungee jumping for squirrels. It is exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Oh, my dog would have gone nuts over that. She would have. She she took cats in the yard as a personal affront, uh, the way your <laughs> dog did with the squirrels. Yeah. And, the, and the cats in our neighborhood used to taunt her. They would come and sit on our porch oh, yeah. and let her just go ape out the out the window at them and just yeah. sit there and stare and mock us. You know, it was 
Yeah, it was crazy. And they know, they seem to know that the dog is gone now because they don't come and do that anymore. <laughs> Very That's funny. Hilarious. Okay, so my husband just walked in. Yeah, and I'm looking at the clock. We need to go. <laughs> okay. Hello. It was nice it's good to see you. <clears throat> it's good to see you too, and I'm glad I had things to show you today. I will I will have things next week too. I'll have more progress on my my shawl. Okay, and I will have catch progress up on, on my blanket to make it worth showing. Yay. Okay. Yay. Yay. All right, well, everybody stay safe and take care, and we'll have the first couple chapters of Count of Monte Cristo on Friday. Sounds good. Yay. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.